Hey, welcome you tens to this um, recording. As you can see, what I would like to cover in this video is how we multiply and divide with thirds. Now we have touched on this already, uh, just in basic terms, and you can see um, that I've written up there one of the basic rules that we learned in our very first lesson, that root A by root B is equal to root AB. Now in this particular lesson, um, it would be great if you could take down some notes as we go. Uh, it might be a good idea if you pause the video at different times to do that. Uh, it's also a really good idea to have a piece of paper next to you and you uh, can use that to jot down any questions that you might have as we go along. Um, because this, this will be particularly helpful um, when, we, when you come into class um, because obviously at the very beginning I'd love to answer all of your questions as well. Um, so to begin with, like I said, uh, we're looking at multiplying and dividing with thirds and this particular rule you've actually become accustomed to already. But what I want us to be able to do is to go one step further and consider if we had something like this. And that is, of course, if we've got a number out the front of our square root sign. So what do we do? Well, one thing that you might want to commit to memory is that we always do numbers, multiply numbers by the numbers in a, an expression. And third will multiply by the third, like it does above here. Now, what that will look like as a rule using my A, B, C and D here, it would be A by C when simplified and then root B by D. So like so. Now of course, this video is not just about multiplying. You can also divide with thirds as well. Now if you come across something like this, A root B divided by C root D. We know that can also look like this, A root B over C root D. When we simplify again, numbers and then third. This is the same as root B over D. So there we have a couple of rules just using pronumerals. But I obviously want to show you how this would look when we've got some specific examples in there. So if we go to the next slide, here's a few here. A couple where we're multiplying and a couple where we're dividing. Okay, so for this first one here, like I said earlier, when we're multiplying thirds, we multiply the numbers by the numbers and the third by the third. Oh, obviously when these thirds are numbers as well, um, don't get me wrong, but we're multiplying our whole numbers here, integers first. So eight fours, and then of course we're going root two by root three. You don't need to write that step there, but I've just done that to show you how I get root six. So 32 root six would be our answer. We can't simplify the root six any further. Over to B now, I'm going to do the same thing. This time we've got a negative there, you see it's just in a bracket, um, often that's done. Just so you can clearly see this is a negative number, it's not times um, minus or times subtract or anything like that. It's a negative 4 root 11. So I'm going to multiply the numbers first, so 7 4s, or negative 7 I should say. Oh, actually in fact negative 4 by 7, so negative 28 and we're doing root 2 by root 11. And again, you may like to skip that second step and go straight to negative 28 root 22. Uh, always consider, can I simplify the root 22 any further? No, I can't. Uh, there's no perfect square factors of 22. Okay, just a couple with dividing now. I'm going to do this division here, 25 on 5, nice and straightforward, and then this is going to be root 10 on 5 when simplified, and that comes out nicely as 5 root 2. 
over to this one over here. Again, we've got a negative there, so be careful with those. Don't try not to lose them in your workings. Uh, negative 32 on 16. Goes nicely. And then root 45 on 15. And we get negative 2, root 3. Okay. We'll move on. Again, just pause if you need to. What we can also do, obviously, is raise thirds to a power as we're just going to be multiplying them by themselves. I'll just move this out of the way for a moment so that I can concentrate on this one. So 3 root 5 squared. Now, obviously, that is 3 root 5 by 3 root 5. So I could write it out that way. 3 threes, and then root 5 by root 5 is just 5. So this is going to come out as 40. Five. Now, this is also the same. Let's make a little note down here. You can say this is 3 squared by root 5 squared. So then 9 by 5, 45. So there's a couple of different ways you can do your working. See, obviously, as you get faster at it, this would be a lot quicker rather than writing it out the long way like I've done there but whatever you are most comfortable with. Now, over to this one. This time we're raising it to a power of three. So I'll go the longer way first. Two root two by two root two by two root two. So we've got two by two by two, which is eight. Now root two by root two is obviously two. But then we're, we're multiplying that 2 by root 2. So it's actually going to, need to look like that. So I'll just make a little note so I can show you what I've done. This here becomes 2 by root 2. And then to finish it off, this is going to be 16 root 2. Now again, what you can do is go right 2 to the power of 3 is 8 and then root 2 to the power of 3 and then I just do that bit in my head. It's going to be 2 by root 2 and then I can uh, write it out like this and finish it off. So that's how we raise some thirds to a power. Now you're not going to get some crazy numbers here. Generally, they're pretty small like the ones I've got here. Um, but obviously, the process that you go through is very important um, getting that right. The next one... I want to show you is if you've got brackets. So um, the distributive law we call this. So if you've got a number out the front multiplied by b plus c, obviously every number within, or every term I should say, within that bracket will get multiplied by the number on the outside. So we're going to do the exact same thing, but we are going to do it with thirds. So the first one here, back. This first part is going to be 2 root 3 by root 5. So I've taken that first uh, number there, multiplied it by the first term. And secondly, 2 root 3 by root 3. So multiplied by the second term this time. Now let's finish that off. This is going to be 2 root 15 plus, this is 2 root 3 by 3, root 3 by 3 is, uh, root 3 by root 3 is 3, 2 3s are 6. So we'll finish that one off. I want you to have a look at the next one. You might even like to try this second one before me. Uh, so just pause it and have a go. And of course, I'm doing this in quite a few steps. Um, normally, I wouldn't write out that second step, but if you're more comfortable doing that, you might like to. So 4 root 6 
minus 4 root 3. So that's using thirds in, it's using some of our prior knowledge in fact, the distributive law. And the last thing I want to show you in this video is how we multiply or how we work with thirds when we've got binomial products. So what I mean by that is when you've got two brackets like I've got here, a plus b multiplied by c plus d. Uh, now just as a little bit of a review, when I ex uh, expand this, what I would be doing is multiplying each term in this bracket by that full bracket there. So what I mean by that is this expands to a by c plus d plus b by c plus d. When that expands out, I'm going to get ac plus ad plus bc plus bd. Now some of you might recognize this. I'll just link it to what you've probably done last year in year nine. If you have a look at this expanded, this is the first, AC is the first term in each bracket. AD are the outer terms, BC two inner terms, and BD the last term. So that might look familiar to you, the FOIL method. Um, I Oh well, I obviously have used that right here, but I actually do that step first. Um, in all of these examples that I'm going to, um, well, the next two examples that I'm going to do with you. So don't be alarmed by that. I'm just doing it the longer way to show you how this FOIL expansion comes about. Okay, so let's have a go. Here are a couple. get the right colour and let's begin. So first term in that first bracket is 2 root 3. I'm going to multiply that by that second bracket. My next step will be to take the second term in the first bracket and again multiply it by the contents of that second bracket. So there it is. And now, just applying that distributive law that I used before, 2 root 3 by root 5 plus 2 root 3 by 2 root 2. That's the first part. Now this is going to, oh, this is going to get fairly long. But like I've said before, a lot of these you can actually do in one step. Um, this is going to be 2 by 2 at the end there. Okay, so I've got 2 root 15 plus 4 root 6 plus root 10 plus 4. And that I've just multiplied each of these out to simplify like so. Uh, whenever you're doing these, of course, um, at the end you want to check, do you have any perfect square factors in there? No, I don't. I've got 15, 6 and 10 and they are in their most simplified form. So there's our first one and one last one for this video to show you. And here we've got one with a negative in it. Okay, so again, first term by the second bracket. the second term, because it's plus 6 here, so plus root 6 I should say, root 5 minus root 7 again. Okay, so let's go. This is root 3 by root 5. This is going to be root 3 by root 7. Then we have root 6 by root 5. root 15, root 21, root 30, root 42. Okay, have a look. Three fives, three sevens, three by ten, so three by five by two. No square factors there. 
6 by 7, no square factors there either. So it's actually going to finish off just like that. So sometimes they don't look, come looking out, they don't come out looking quite as simple as you'd like them to, um, but that is as simple as we can get it. So we'll leave it as is. So thank you very much for watching this video. Um, hopefully it hasn't been too long. Um, do make sure if you do have any additional questions, jot them down for me. Um, even if it's just something really small, um, don't be hesitant to ask. And I'll be seeing you in class. Thanks, girls.